Okay, so moving on to our final task, number three, which is default route. So now we have to create a loopback 88 on R6 with the IP of 8.8.8.8 slash 32. So let's do that first. On R6, loopback 88, IP address slash 32. Okay, next we have to configure R6 to advertise a default route to the rest of the network. And we are now allowed to use a network command. And then we need to verify that our loopback 88 can be reached by all of the routers. So going back, do a little refresh in the diagram. So here on R6, we have our loopback 88. Instead of advertising loopback 88, we want to advertise a default route so the rest of the network can reach loopback 88. And because the task mandate that we cannot use a network command. One way of doing it is to create a static route. So just to show you, this is alternative. Basically point to a null zero. So R6 will have that route. And then basically you can go under the router BGP and then 200 and use a network command with a quad zero and then mass quad zero. All right, but since we are not allowed to use the network command, we're gonna have to come up with uh, another way of doing that. And that is to use a neighbor command. And obviously if you use a network command, then the default will be advertised to all of the PGP neighbors. But if you use a neighbor command, you can selectively advertise a default route to a particular BGP neighbor. But for us, we need to advertise it to all the neighbors and that includes R3 and R4. Okay, so the command is neighbor, and then the neighbor, we'll say to 16.0.3. Question mark, that is a command that you probably have heard of already with other routing protocol, which is the default originate. So that would be neighbor IP default originate. Okay, the main difference of doing this, actually, hang on before I say that, 46.4, uh, which is R4. What I was going to say was the main difference of using or going with this configuration option is, is you're not required to have, or the router is not required to have the actual default route in its routing table. Okay, so it will advertise a default route to whatever neighbor that you specify through this command, regardless of the, the presence of the default route in this routing table, which is almost the same uh, in OSPF with the default originate uh, always. Okay, so now if you do show, IP BGP summary. Oh, actually, it's a uh, show IP BGP. So you can see you don't really have a default route in its own BGP table. As opposed to if you were to do a static route, then do a network command, you will see a default route show up here. But if you do show IP BGP neighbor, and let's go over to R3. And you can see right here that R3 has the default route in its BGP table. Although when we did the show IP BGP neighbor advertise routes, it doesn't really show as part of the routes that's being advertised to R3. All right, so just keep that in mind when you use the neighbor default originate command. But obviously R3 has successfully received that route. And that should also be the case for R4 right here. So you can see that R4 has received the default route from R6, R2, and R3. So you can see, so R4 received a default route in three different directions, and it somehow prefer R3 as the best routes. Okay, obviously that's not the most optimal path, as it should have gone directly through R6. So if you were to force R4 to go directly to R6, then you're going to have to go through the attribute manipulations to make sure that R4 would prefer R6. And we're going to talk about that later in the BGP path selection video. Okay, but for now, going through R3 is okay. Eventually, we'll reach R6. And then let's go back to the task real quick. We want to make sure that it's reachable through all the routers. So let's go to R1, ping 8888. Actually, I forgot to source feedback 10. Okay, it's pingable. Trace route. See R1, actually that's zero, 10. Okay, so R1 actually goes to R3 and then R6. For R2, let's just do a quick ping. 
Okay, it's pingable. Just do a quick show IP Ceph. You can see it's following the default route with the next top pointing to R1. Okay, R3 is in the same AS as R6, so we know that's most likely it's going to work. Right, so R4. Let's go ahead and do a trace routes, and according to the BGP table, we should go to R3 first, and then to R6. Right now on R5. Uh, leave back 10. Okay, pingable, show IP Ceph. Again, follow the default route, and it's preferring a route through R1. And you can see it, it went from 1 to 3 to R6. Okay, the last router I want to check is R7. You can see from R7 it went to R2, R1, R3, and R6. Okay, so these are the default path selection without having to manipulate any kinds of uh, attributes or metrics. Okay, so that's pretty much complete our task number 3. So now that we have a basic configurations in place, which is the BGP neighbor adjacency and having all of our routes being advertised in the network and verify all the reachability, we are now ready to move on to the more advanced topic of BGP. And that's basically conclude our video on BGP basic route advertisement. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next BGP videos.